This is, um, first of all, this ending to the reading of Romans is absolutely beautiful, and I commend it uh, to you for ap- actually um, uh, for memorization. Uh, the advantage, now that you've been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification, which means your holiness, your, your um, just the juicy goodness of um, full life, full health, full fullness of life. That's sanctification, holiness. Um, and the end is eternal life, which is not heaven far away. It's right now. It's like how we live and move and be in this world uh, right now. Um, it's seeing like all the color. It's seeing, it's living life in full color as opposed to just black and white. Um, that's eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That is absolutely, that is really good news. Um, And I I just want to lift that up. Uh, So in the gospel, uh, Jesus is talking about the eternal life, this aspect of eternal life and sanctification around welcoming, you know, welcoming um, the stranger which was a huge biblical command um, and is still practiced uh, throughout the Middle East and in pretty much any desert country. Welcoming the stranger is an act of, of, of uh, holiness. So, uh, so Jesus is talking about a very expansive notion of welcoming. And, um, you know, we usually think of these little ones. I mean, we can easily think of little ones as being like children. And we're actually going to talk about welcoming children. Uh, But little ones in the Bible are uh, his disciples, or actually he calls his disciples little ones because they have left everything to follow him. Um, It's a a form of endearment. Uh, Little ones are also people who uh, lack status, whether whether it's economics um, or health or, um, you know, physical attributes. the sick, the the stranger. So welcoming little ones is a big deal. And it oftentimes meaning means changing our own perspective to make room uh, for people who are who who bring a lot of difference into our midst. Um, and not to cling to the same way that we think things ought to be done or the same perspective uh, that we just take as for granted. Um, that everybody thinks this way, because <laughs> this is common sense. But then when you get to know people from different cultures and different, um, you know, just di- different backgrounds, you find out that what you thought was common sense is, is basically it's your perspective. Um, and there's a whole lot of ways of looking at this, at something. So, so welcoming in Jesus's world makes your world bigger. It makes your uh, experience richer. Uh, it gives more, you know, color to your world, more eternal life, holiness in your own world. So I've invited two people to speak about this from different perspectives. One is Susie Brusa, who spoke last week. Uh, Susie is the CEO of Rancho Cielo. She was the, uh, named the 2018 Businesswoman of the Year. In 2019, her organization, Rancho Cielo, uh, was named by the Chamber of Commerce as Business of the Year. Um, Susie is a longtime parishioner and she's going to be talking about diversity and inclusion and what the, how, you know, how we welcome um, a diverse group of people and really help us all to be included uh, in the vision and in, and in bringing all our gifts to the table. Sandy is going to be talking about the um, very real welcome that we give to actual children. Uh, And so I I just want to begin there. You know, Good Shepherd is known for welcoming children. We welcome almost 100 children uh, into our um, community every year. And in fact, on Monday, uh, we are going to be welcoming uh, the beginning of our uh, summer camp. So Sandy, tell us just a little bit, some practical things about, you know, how you, how do you welcome children? 
Well, I, I think it's a way that we first interact with the children that's very important. Um, we get down at their level. And one of the simple things that we say is that um, we've been waiting to see you. Um, or we've been waiting for you to come to this place. And um, it just helps them just feel very welcomed and loved. Um, as far as other ways, I think um, we treat children as if they're guests. That's one of our little mottos. Remember that they're guests at, at preschool and um, they're here to enjoy and play. And even through the tough times, they're still our guests. So, um, and we just have a wonderful, welcoming, diverse staff as well. Um, who share many of their own personal ways of teaching with the children too. Thank you. Um, I love that. Um, we're, we've been waiting for you. I mean, just, you know, just having that attitude, bringing that attitude into our lives when we meet new people, I've been waiting to meet you. You know, I, I, that's, that's beautiful. And I think one of the most important, we have many different things in the classroom as far as, I mean, books are just prolific with just wonderful pictures and stories and things. But the most important thing is, is the parents and communicating with the parents and bringing the parents' participation into the classroom and kind of bringing their home a little bit into the classroom, which we're able to do quite a few times. And... Um, so it's that in itself is it's just really important, I think, as part as part of uh, having the parents and their backgrounds and their values um, brought into the classroom mm -hmm. and their points of view. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we also do with the children. Um, we we when we teach with the children, it is um, oh well, I do it this way. Oh, you do it that way. Well, that's different. Did you see the way so-and-so? They did it a different way. So we, we want to um, honor differences, and we really work hard at honoring the differences in, in uh, the children ideas. We could put out an art activity and have an idea, and they go out there, and it turns completely different. <laughs> but we're not going to stop, and, you know, we're, we're happy to see their minds and the way they think. Thank you, thank you. And I know that the preschool also just incorporates as a regular practice, um, you know, in the cooking kitchen, you told me there's there's a wok, there's a tortilla maker, you know, that it's just incorporated these different uh, cultures mm -hmm. into the activities. Yeah. Thank you, we're very, very fortunate at Good Shepherd to, um, to you know, be practicing uh, in real life. And we can always learn and want to learn more about um, being both diverse and inclusive. And it takes work. Uh, you know, it's, it's not, it takes us always uh, looking at ways that we can extend ourselves further and make room for other visions uh, and other gifts. Yes. So, um, <clears throat> Uh, and uh, anyway, that's, I just want to say welcoming. It's not, it's sweet, it's easy, and it's work. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean it was easy. It's, it's sweet and it takes work and, and we all want to do it well. Um, and so I, we're going to hear from Susie uh, also about the work that she's done through Rancho Cielo in terms of inclusion and uh, di diversity and inclusion. Hi, I love the gospel today about welcoming. So now that we've established that there is still racism in this country, some of it propagated by mean individuals, but some of it actually systemic, the question is, what do we do? Businesses long ago discovered that diversifying their workforce was going to actually be profitable by helping to broaden their horizons and avoid missteps that might limit sales or clientele. We started down this diversity road years ago. So what's inclusion and why is that now part of the thing? Think of it this way. Diversity is inviting someone to the party while inclusion is asking them to dance. 
Again, it's not color blind, it's color appreciative. At Rancho Cielo, it's been a 10 year project, but the Rancho Cielo Board of Directors has gone from 0% people of color to about 40% people of color. And likewise on the staff, we've gone from 10% people of color to about 70% people of color. Now that's the diversity part. Inclusion is in getting to know people well enough that you can understand their gifts and then promoting them into positions of leadership and giving them the voice of influence. I have a young woman that I uh, hired years ago, Maria Cecilia Flores Romero. I hired her as a case manager and consequently, after a couple of years, promoted her to development director and ultimately into the job of deputy director in charge of programs. She has several stories about uh, how it's been difficult to be, to integrate into our world and how people don't exercise cultural competency. Um, one of our volunteers, a former board member actually, when they were planning for one of our major fundraisers, the committee was hoping to have mariachi for entertainment. So he, after the meeting, sent her an email suggesting that it would be easiest if she did the research on the mariachi because those are her people. She was taken aback. Uh, she very carefully explained responded that in fact, as she was from El Salvador and mariachi is not part of their cultural heritage, but she offered to ask her husband who's of Mexican descent, although he was born in this country, whether or not he had any contacts. I think cultural competency, part of it is in getting to know people well enough to understand what they bring and what's their story. Don't assume every Latina is from Mexico. My friend Tina, a beautiful black woman with a degree from Harvard Business School, shared with me recently that when we worked together years ago, that several of our coworkers consistently called her by the wrong name. You see, there were two young African-American women on the team. Lesson number two, learn people's name. That's how you can make people feel welcome. So I think to wrap up, I think it's important to remember that tolerance and acceptance are not the same as authentic inclusion, authentic integration, and intercultural competency. Welcome. So the Holy Spirit is really blowing through this country, I believe. I really believe the Holy Spirit is blowing through this country. Um, and inviting us to welcome prophets uh, and and little ones um, and um, changing so that there is room for others uh, to bring their own unique gifts and visions um, to our common future. So I want to end in prayer. Dear Lord, your word reveals to us that in your kingdom, there is an immeasurable amount of people from every nation, from all tribes and peoples, and from all languages. This diverse multitude are all worshipers of you who stand before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white robes, crying out that salvation belongs to you. In heaven, there is diversity and inclusion. So let this be our mindset and our practice here on earth as well. Amen.